we were getting paid good money for what we would do anyway, <laughs> and it doesn't get better than that. Yeah. And so we were still thinking in those terms, because in, in those days, about the only one guy to have made real money out of SF, for example, in the UK was John Bindon, I suppose, at his time. And there were some others out there, but in, in our mind, I mean, Tom Keen, like, there was Tom Keen and there was Roald Dahl, and, yeah. and apart from them, you sort of... So we didn't think of ourselves as among the gods, right? <laughs> nor do we now, I suppose. <laughs> 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 So, you know, going slowly and nervously on the matter was, was a kind of a sensible thing against the background of what we knew. The, um, but the, the auction happened, and it was, it was just one of those lovely places where there were three or four different publishers who actually had read it and went, we love this, and they started offering more and more money, and the amounts got silly. And we got, in one case, incredibly happy, and in another case, incredibly nervous. <laughs> and then it was all over. And, uh, and now we thought we were done. But we hadn't thought that there was still America. <laughs> and neither of us had yet discovered America properly. I mean, we, we, we knew it was there. We'd heard about Christopher Columbus and all that. <laughs> But we hadn't discovered America, and America definitely really hadn't properly discovered us, even though things of ours were both being published in America, and, and Sandman was just down to take off. Um, but we had a publisher. Can I be, can I be rude about what um, do you think? Absolutely. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'll be gently rude about what This is truth and consequence. I know. Um, so, there were a bunch of publishers who wanted to do good omens. And we didn't actually wind up going with the one that offered the most, most money. I think there, or I think it was like, there were, I think there were about three or four publishers all offering pretty much the same. But we went to the one who was the most enthusiastic. And the most enthusiastic was Workman Books. And Workman Books, if you are publishing a book with a title like fun things to do at a party for your new baby, Workmen are your publisher. If you are <laughs> publishing a great new cookbook, Workmen are your publisher. If I had an idea for a cool novelty title about, you know, their, their biggest, I think still 20 years later, their biggest success is what to expect when you're mm -hmm. expected. <laughs> the books that are absolutely the non-fiction and we met, and they are an amazing publisher for that stuff, and we met Peter Workman, and he said, look, I want to publish you guys because um, I've only ever wanted to publish one non-fiction title before. It was Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and I kicked myself for not having bid on it, and I think I should have done I don't want you guys, and I am going to do everything I can to make this book the best published book in the whole world. And Terry and I said, he, he is a nice man, they're a great little publisher, and he's, he's passionate. And we both responded. Okay. We both responded to the passion. Oh, yes, we did. Yes, we did, we did. I mean, because we were dumb. We <laughs> <laughs> were very stupid. Uh, and nice. I mean, I like to think we're both pretty nice, but stupid. Uh, stupid, stupid, stupid. So we said, yes, Mr. Workman, have our book. Make it your first ever fiction title. And we thought, actually, that'll be kind of cool, because there's a big publisher, and they'll be going, look, we're doing a fiction book. So um, we got a very nice editor named Sean McCarthy, who actually made us, um, who said, could you, could you do chapters, because the, the the Golax version of um, Good Omens is just one long text broken up by occasional little <coughs> backwing dower glasses, which we found on a tombstone while we were having our photographs taken. It's true. Yes. Um, oh, look, can I tell you the anecdote? Yes. Um, 
Salman Rushdie was having this bit of bother when the time <laughs> for us uh, to launch the Romans. And Gollans wanted us to have our, um, have our photographs taken in a cemetery, of course. <laughs> and that meant one of us, and the, 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 the wizard weeds was that one of us would wear black and one of us would wear white. And being cunning, I thought, <laughs> we might get into trouble for this. <laughs> and also knowing that the chance of getting Neil out of black <laughs> <laughs> was infinitesimal small. <laughs> I, uh, I volunteered to but you did not, I, But you did not own anything white. <laughs> no. And so I had to, I had to borrow a pair of of uh, who's who it? was Malcolm Edwards. Malcolm Edwards is white trousers. White, white trousers and white jacket. Now these days, I could get inside his trousers and dance. <laughs> <laughs> his trousers were quite small. Uh, and very, very, very thin. And it was then, January. Because it was summer trousers, it was from cricketing and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so, after about five tanks, they had to pick me up and carry me into the groundsman's hut around the back, where there was an electric fire. Because I was frozen to the bone. 